Today, the adventure begins in the middle of nowhere. At least that's how our host, Ray Bunny, describes it. But Chris Hobson, the local farmer and owner of this 13,000 acre property, would disagree with Ray. This is home, and only a select few, including PH Mike Birch, have been allowed to hunt on these grounds. You know, with Mike Birch, you never know where you're gonna end up. You know, he was telling us about a place, a secret place that he had for Eastern Cape Kudu. We asked him, okay, well, Mike, how far away is this? He said, oh, it's, it's about a seven hour, eight hour drive. We had already spent about 12 days with Mike, and he told us about this place that he had been keeping secret and only took friends to that was an extraordinary place that had more kudu kind of concentrated in one area than anything he had ever seen. Now this guy has been everywhere. I don't think there's a piece of a ground or province within Africa that he has not hunted or, or done some work in and surveyed. So when he was excited about kudu, I was excited about kudu. Hundreds of kudu roam this territory, but the hunting isn't easy on the rocky terrain. So a long distance rifle hunt seems like the only choice. Armed with the custom-made Ferguson rifles, the crew isn't too worried about making the shot. Finding the gray ghost in this type of brush cover may be a different story. Probably the animal in Africa that people really, really know about and really want to come and hunt, number one list on everybody is the kudu. Kudu is a phenomenal animal. Kudu bull, when you look at him, you just he just takes your breath away. He's got these huge sweeping horns going up. And when he looks at you, he, he's majestic. He can hear you from miles away. He's got phenomenal eyesight and he's got a very, very good nose. So it's not like with some animals where two out of the three are working. He, all three are working and not just that, all three are very, very sharp. The second largest province in South Africa, the Eastern Cape, is covered in mountain ranges and deep, thick forest, making it the perfect habitat for kudu. And with kudu on the mind, the crew found themselves miles out of the way, trusting that there would be plenty of kudu at Mike's secret spot. After making the long trip, they were ready to see if it was worth it. Mike got us up, got us ready. We grabbed the rifles and we headed out. And this country is, is similar to what you might see in Arizona or New Mexico. It's extremely open, a lot of brush, a lot of rocky mountains, and uh, this is an area where they, they raise some fabulous cattle, but it is just overrun with these kudu. Now this place had so many kudu that they were culling over a three year period to bring the kudu numbers down. And when we arrived, it was really a neat place because it was just a homestead where these farmers had been farming sheep and the kudu population had just exploded. It looks like Mike definitely knew what he was talking about. The morning came quick. Ray and Jim were eager to make a stock, so they began moving up higher in elevation to glass for the Eastern Cape Kudu's unique spiraled horns that occasionally dip into the sunlight. Well, we traveled about, seemed like 12 hours last night, probably more like six. We got in here, uh, about 3 o'clock, 2.30 2 this morning. We're way down in the Eastern Cape, um, hunting kudu in these big mountains that you see around us. And it's pretty heavy, thick bush. And it's just all a spot and stock, and all bulls are legal, so it should be a great day. After moving closer, the crew is in perfect position Unfortunately for Ray, it's Jim's turn to make the shot. And I leaned against a tree and I said, everybody ready? And the kudu was gonna walk away and I wasn't gonna be able to shoot him. And I had him right in the crosshairs. Oh, go ahead, he's right there, he's broadside. And I pulled the trigger and I knew by the sound of that bullet that that thing hit him. Okay, take him. Get ready. He stood back up. He's back on his feet. You see him Ray right fired there. a couple more shots. The kudu got up into the trees. He stopped at about 15 to 16 yards from where I originally shot him. And then I just put the crosshairs on him again, pulled the trigger, and down he went. 500. Down. He's down right there. <laughs> Good job. Kudu bull, huh? 
Yeah, baby. This is an extraordinary place. I mean, there are kudu everywhere in this basin. I mean, how many bulls were in there? Eight. Right, Chris saw, yeah, there were seven or eight. There were seven or eight bulls, and we just happened to shoot the smallest one. No, we didn't. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Those Our horns. put us on a good one, man. I'm telling you. We're on the blood trail right now, and the dog's following it up. Got spots of blood where he come around this corner. When you often think Lux. of a tracking dog, you don't think of a little beagle like this. But they're all over Africa, and they're amazingly tough and very aggressive. And you put them on a blood trail, and boom, right to the animal. It's really impressive to watch these little dogs work. South African PHs and these Jack Russells have a unique relationship. Now, this little fella, this little dog, is probably a bow hunter's greatest friend. He's a real asset on any on any of the hunting uh, hunting operations. In, in South Africa, you'll see that a lot of, the, a lot of the, the hunting outfitters use these dogs because they are phenomenal at taking a blood spur. Um, when you've hit an animal with a bow especially, he doesn't fall down immediately. In a thick brush, it could be 100 meters, it could be 200 meters, and in thick brush, that could mean hours. Often, there's not a big blood trail and you've got to go quietly. It could be across stony ground. You're not going to find it quickly. This guy cuts down your time because he, he'll pick up that scent and within, within minutes you'll be at your animal. He's found him. Got him, huh? There he is, right there. Woo. Good job, Jimmy. <laughs> that was Kudu some shooting. Bull. Those are gargantuan. They're like a two liter bottle on each side of his head. <laughs> They're so alert. I mean, we could be, we were, we were 500 yards away from these bulls up on the hill, and, and they instantly know you're here. I mean, it doesn't matter how quiet, no matter how you're sneaking along, they are not called the gray ghost for nothing. 